Implementing any of these science-backed protocols will guarantee better race times. However, if you apply all five, expect your running performance to greatly surpass what traditional methods can achieve. Starting with a protocol designed to supercharge your lungs and reduce your amount of breathlessness. Because when you breathe, specific muscles are responsible for drawing oxygen in. However, when running hard or far, these muscles become fatigued and can put a handbrake on your performance. We can combat this by strengthening your inspiratory muscles. We can do this without any equipment, I'll get to that shortly, or you can choose to use handheld devices such as the Power Breathe Plus. Think of it like resistance training for your breathing muscles. You can adjust the resistance dial, making it harder for your muscles to pull air in, and over time, they become stronger. Using these devices has been shown to improve running performance, reduce the amount of breathlessness, and enhance recovery after running. These devices are available at the Home Med website, which they sent me one to test out myself, and I'm halfway through my own tests, so if you haven't already, subscribe to see a future video on my results. But you can mimic this approach without any equipment. I recently recorded a podcast interview with James Fletcher, who specializes in optimizing your lungs for performance. And this is what he recommends for his athletes. So make a fist, like not like you're squeezing it hard, but like you're holding onto a pencil and you don't want anyone to get it out of your hand. Then lift your ring finger and your pinky finger, and then breathing through the hole that your thumb makes. That is quite similar to any of the devices that we will receive. The protocol you should follow is 30 breaths twice a day for four to six weeks. And if you're using a device, continue bumping up the resistance when 30 breaths are no longer challenging. Just like you'd increase your squat weight when your legs become stronger. After four weeks, you can enter a maintenance phase, which is one to two sets of 30 breaths every second day. And you'll continue enjoying reduced breathlessness and improved performance. Research also shows that warming up these respiratory muscles in the same way can also improve race day performances. So the manual recommends two sets of 30 breaths at 80% of your current training load to get the best running results. But if breathing through your fist, I'd recommend one set of 15 to get things warmed up. The next protocol has been scientifically proven to reduce muscle damage and muscle soreness after high intensity sessions while simultaneously filling your body with useful stress and mood hormones like norepinephrine and dopamine. These effects will revitalize your training and involves deliberate cold water exposure. But don't just skip this part just because cold water exposure is something you don't wanna do. In fact, not wanting to do it is exactly why you should do it. Let me explain. Every time you're presented with a challenge, that you really don't want to do, but with tenacity you do it anyway, it activates and grows a very specific part of your brain called the anterior mid cingulate cortex, which plays a crucial role in achieving goals such as marathons. So with deliberate cold water exposure, not only are you receiving all the positive recovery and hormone benefits, but you have the added benefit of a tenacious brain when your body is telling you to slow down during the hardest parts of your race. And the protocol goes like this. Set your water temperature cold enough that you really don't wanna get in. This will create a surge of norepinephrine. And this creates the first wall you need to break through to strengthen that anterior mid cingulate cortex. Then step in and stay under the water for one minute, resisting the urge to quit. This is the second opportunity to strengthen that area of the brain. Next, turn off the water and do the rest of your shower tasks before tackling the third and final barrier, which is turning the cold water back on and rinsing everything off. Do this four to six times per week or 12 minutes of cold water exposure in total. I'm currently on a 40 day streak and I confess, it doesn't get any easier. But we can't talk about increasing your performance if we ignore optimizing your recovery. And in the book, Good To Go, How To Eat, Sleep and Rest Like A Champion, Christy Ashwanden states that nothing else comes close to sleep's recovery enhancing powers. You could add together every other recovery aid ever discovered and they wouldn't stack up. But this is where runners start burning the candle at both ends. Because when their training load increases, their runs become longer 
and they resort to waking up earlier to squeeze in the mileage. Not only is a good night's sleep necessary for recovery, but research will show poorer performance with reduced sleep and conversely better performance with enhanced sleep. Amy Bender is a sleep scientist who shares great research across her socials and in her research found using electronic devices one hour before bedtime led to greater sleep difficulties and worse marathon times. So here is the sleep protocol. Get between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. Not time in the bed, time spent asleep. You can get away with seven hours as a bare minimum, but towards the peak weeks of training, shift your sleep as close as you can towards nine hours. Next, be regular with your sleep routine. In other words, going to bed and waking up at relatively the same time. You can allow 30 minutes buffer either way, and this can allow for day-to-day -day variability. It's also important that you have high sleep efficiency, meaning the total time in bed versus the time actually asleep. And hopefully that's around 85%. For example, if I'm in bed for nine hours and only sleep for seven, my efficiency is around 78%. And if you're not reaching this mark, we can add interventions to help. Some ideas could be avoiding electric devices one hour before bedtime, avoiding caffeine in the second half of the day, making sure the room is cool and dark enough, and being mindful of alcohol, food, and water around bedtime. Lastly, for this protocol, try to get extra sleep in the three nights leading up to the race, which has been shown to increase performance. So sleep has this good double whammy effect because it can both enhance recovery while also increasing performance. But what if I told you that there's something that you can eat which creates the same double whammy effect? Well, research has uncovered an antioxidant called polyphenols that can boost recovery by buffering lactate and increasing reoxygenation rates, while simultaneously demonstrating a clear, moderate benefit on performance. So based off this research, here is the protocol. Throughout your training, make a conscious effort to consume more polyphenols. These can be found in dark chocolate, cranberries, strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries. If you can, aim for about 700 milligrams of polyphenols, which equates to 200 grams of dark chocolate, 250 milligrams of green tea, and 300 grams of mixed berries per day. However, research suggests that a greater intake may lead to greater performance and recommends using polyphenol supplements in the form of quercetin for seven days before race day. This will supercharge your body and give you the best chance for a personal best. Now we cannot talk about running faster without mentioning strength training. And if I had to pick one muscle group, it would have to be the calves as they by far play the biggest role in propulsion. But runners get this all wrong. Firstly, they are doing high rep, low weight calf raises, which is the opposite approach if you wanna increase performance. And the second mistake is doing calf raises with a straight leg, which biases the gastrocnemius, a muscle that only works two to three times your body weight, while the other calf muscle, the soleus, works six to eight times your body weight and goes relatively ignored. So the protocol involves double leg bent knee calf raises twice a week, holding onto a weight that is challenging enough to complete 10 repetitions, then rest for one to two minutes before completing the other two sets. And while we're on the topic of strength training, if you're curious about other strengthening exercises, including sets, reps, and rest periods proven to increase your running performance by 4%, then check out this video where I have a practical step-by-step -step guide.